Welcome to the very first Powered Parachuting Show here with Roy Beiswinger. This is the show where we talk about my favorite form of flight, powered parachutes. We're going to talk about flying them. We're going to have flying footage. We're going to talk about tips. We're going to talk about definitions of things, training, all sorts of stuff. This very first episode of the Powered Parachute Show, we're going to talk about what exactly is a powered parachute. What is it? How do you define it? And what makes it different from its brethren, the powered paraglider trike? Uh, we'll do our intro and we'll be right back. So what you're looking at here as far as the video goes is a flight I took here at the uh, Greenville Airport. It's a wonderful airport that I operate from and I just thought that flying footage would be a whole lot more entertaining to look at than me while I'm talking. So I hope you enjoy that. There's nothing special about the flight. It's just a little test flight I took uh, in order to grab some footage to put behind this video. Anyway, let's get to it. As a flight instructor, I will often get questions about what is a powered parachute versus what is a powered paraglider trike. There's a lot of answers out there and the answers vary in quality and they also vary by people's point of view. It also draws out some pretty strong opinions from people who are huge advocates of one flavor of flying versus the other. Uh, but the one thing I'd like to get behind us right away you know is they're both great ways to get in the sky they have slightly different purposes they're designed to do slightly different things but the main thing that they both do is they get people in the sky they get you enjoying the sky and they're both wonderful ways to personally just get up in the air uh, really relatively inexpensively one of the main differences between powered parachutes and powered paraglider trikes is how they're regulated. Um, and the main definition we're going to look for is found in part one of the Code of Federal Regulations, uh, the Title 14, which is like aero, aviation and aerospace. And a few years ago, they actually put in a definition for powered parachutes. This came along when they had put together the sport pilot rule and got rid of um, ultralight trainers or got rid of most ultralight trainers. Um, they all transitioned into the regular FAA system. Well, as soon as they pulled them into the regular FAA system, they had to come up with a definition. A lot of the things, a lot of the terms that are, that are what they consider cross-cutting, you're going to see in several different parts of the regulations, you're going to find them in part one of the uh, of, of the FARs. Uh, so let's look at the only definition there is because there's not a definition of powered paraglider trikes or even paragliders or powered paragliders but we do have one for parachutes and that's for skydiving parachutes and we have another one for powered parachutes. Let's read it. Powered parachute means a powered aircraft comprised of a flexible or semi-rigid wing connected to a fuselage so that the wing is not in position for flight until the aircraft is in motion. The fuselage of a powered parachute contains the aircraft engine, a seat for each occupant, and is attached to the aircraft's landing gear. Okay, uh, so that has pretty much defined both powered paraglider trikes and powered parachutes, uh, and that we could just call it call it good. You know, we just finish out watching the, the video here. No, we're, we're not going to do that. We're going to go into a little bit more detail. Okay, so let's talk about another definition. And this isn't found in part one of the regulations. This is found in part 103. In fact, it leads off part 103. Part 103 is the ultralight regulations. And that is the regulation where a lot of uh, very light aircraft operate, including powered parachutes in some cases, including a lot of airplanes, including uh, all foot launch powered paragliders, powered paraglider trikes, uh, all of that stuff. So let's take a read at that one. And, and I'll tell you, this one's even longer than the last, but here it is. An ultralight vehicle is something first that is used or intended to be used for manned operation in the air by a single occupant. And this is the biggest 
thing that's going on with uh, the difference between what people are considering powered paraglider trikes and powered parachutes. It's that single occupant thing. If you are willing to fly alone, you're going to be in great shape with an something operating under the ultralight rules. Let's go on. It's used or intended to be used for recreation or sport purposes only. It doesn't have an airworthiness certificate. If it's powered, it weighs less than 254 pounds empty weight. Okay, It has a fuel capacity not exceeding 5 U.S. gallons. That's going to limit your, your range typically. And, and actually for a lot of powered paraglider powered paragliders, not necessarily powered paraglider trikes, if you're carrying all that fuel along for your takeoff run, you may not even use that whole five gallons. Anyway, uh, is not capable of more than 55 knots calibrated airspeed at full power in level flight and has a power off stall speed which does not exceed 24 knots calibrated airspeed. Okay, those last two points really don't apply to either powered parachutes or powered paraglider trikes. But that is the rule that a good number of powered parachutes, the single seat ones, and most all of the powered paraglider trikes operate under. And since that's what they operate under, uh, the FAA doesn't really care what you call it. Ultralight aviation is something of a no man's land as far as the FAA is concerned. They, they usually have far bigger fish to fry. So if you meet the requirements of it being single seat, five gallons, 254 pounds or less, and, and you're an ultralight, they don't care whether you call it a powered parachute, a powered paraglider, a paraglider, a trike. They, they just don't care. To them, it's all an ultralight. So when we start getting into the details of the language, Really, we're talking about what the users are considering uh, the differences between a powered paraglider and a powered parachute. And so the differences we're going to see are going to be differences that are, again, user-defined. Uh, and a lot of it's user-defined. Some of it's instructor-defined. Some of it is manufacturer-defined. Okay, But there's about three wide areas that people kind of consider you know, you, you, you're either this if you're a powered parachute or you're this if you're a powered paraglider trike. And the first one is weight. Uh, powered parachutes are generally larger machines. They have, uh, you know, they got, they got to be larger in order to have the two seats in them for, for sport aircraft. They also have the bigger engines, which are also going to make them heavier. So weight is one of those big defining things. Although you get into a lot of the European models, you're going to see some pretty heavy things that would otherwise be considered powered paraglider trikes, but they're not. They're they're you know legally if they brought them over here with the two seats, with the weight, with everything else, they would be considered powered parachutes. Powered parachutes generally use more expensive, uh, more reliable power plants. So the the go-to engine nowadays for powered parachutes, and that really doesn't uh, matter too much whether it's in the U.S. or in Europe, is right now it's the Rotex 912 engine. Rotex 912 engine is a pretty pricey power plant. It's the same power plant you're going to see it in high-end gyroplanes, you're going to see it in the high-end light sport aircraft airplanes, it's used in about 90% plus of all light sport aircraft out there. It is a great power plant and it's very stable, but it, it comes at some cost. It's also very efficient, it's very quiet, it's just a, a very nice ride. A powered paraglider trike is going to use a two-stroke engine, uh, mostly. I, I, there's, there's samples out there that use uh, retooled generator engines, retooled you know, four-stroke generator engines, uh, but in essence most of those guys are using the same kinds of motors that they use on their, their backpack versions uh, and those necessarily have to be pretty light. You're not going to strap a uh, a Generac engine to your back, okay, but you you will do some of these smaller uh, two-stroke engines that are they're very very good. They're very powerful. They get you in the air, uh, but they don't have exactly the same reliability you're going to get out of something like the Rotax 912. Differences in wings used to be a very big differentiator. Uh, powered parachutes use wings that are in essence uh, skydive wings. They're designed to be quick opening, they're designed to be 
uh, to stay open. So you know, if you're starting out with a parachute that could fit in, in a backpack on somebody and it deploys after somebody falls off an airplane, that wing is going to be pretty stable. It doesn't matter if it's going to get a gust or something's going to have to. It's going to naturally want to reinflate. The downside to something like that is they're not incredibly efficient, which is part of the reason that you see the bigger motors on a powered parachute. Powered paragliders, on the other hand, use paraglider wings, and paraglider wings have a higher aspect ratio, they're, which means they're longer and they're thinner, okay? They also have a very thin plan form. So when I talk about the first kind of thin with aspect ratio, that's from leading edge to trailing edge. They also are very thin, have a thin profile. Uh, that combination ends up doing two things. It makes the wing very efficient. If that wing is that thin and that, it, it's not going to be that stable. It's, it, it, you know, if you get a gust into it or something like that, it's the wind can be pushed out of it or the air can be pushed out of it. And inflation or reinflation sometimes takes a little bit of effort. And a lot of guys, depending on how hot their wing is, they'll often fly with a reserve. Uh, again, a, you know, a powered parachute wing, if it kites up on the ground and it's good to go, you're just not going to need a reserve. The only wings that I have seen ever or heard of ever collapsing with powered parachutes were either forced by the pilot or they were horrendously misrigged, either just not going uh, you know, with the manufacturer uh, recommendations. The other big thing that is a, it's kind of combined with the wing thing, is how do you steer the wing? All right. Now, ironically, the powered parachute wings don't steer like skydive parachutes. Okay, A uh, long time ago, uh, the very first designer of the powered parachute decided that it would be a lot handier if the machine was foot controlled. And, and actually, the very first powered parachute was invented before even skydiving with square wings was designed but that's another story for another day so but when they designed that first powered parachute they had the foot controls come down to pedals on the left and right side so you push left you go left you push right you go right that's how a powered parachute steers most of the time uh, uh, the way a powered paraglider steers or powered paraglider and well powered paraglider powered paraglider trike the way they steer is by hand controls so you see, see guys with their hands up and they're going to pull toggles left or right just like a skydiver do okay and that's great uh, it, you know it, it's it's a difference it, and it's not that much of a difference again you go to the european designs you go to where the, the, the people are making these things uh, that that suit heavier engines. Heavy, they still haven't given up hand steering. So even though the, the engines are big, the carts are big, everything's big, they, they still have hand steering and they just like it. As far as most people are concerned, they, they, they really don't care too much about what the FAA calls them or what anybody else calls them, so, frankly. If you're just getting into the sport, you're just wanting to pick something to, to fly and so this this whole thing of powered parachute versus powered paraglider trike may be a little confusing that this sorted out a, a little bit down into what your flying mission may be okay if you want to fly solo I mean if you're not wanting to take anybody with you if, if, if your wife or your girlfriend says no way I don't want to fly if your friends don't want to fly with you if your kids don't want to fly with you you know what you're probably just fine with a powered paraglider trike. They're not the easiest things to take off. They're not as easy as a powered parachute, but the differences, uh, you know, the differences in price and the differences in training end up being very, very significant. So if all you want to do is solo flights, getting into a powered paraglider trike may be exactly what you want. Okay. Now, if you're wanting to take somebody with, all right, taking somebody with you involves, uh, you know, getting a license. The, the FAA simply does not want somebody flying someone unless they have some kind of training under their belt, okay? And the best way to prove training is to get a powered parachute license, all right? And then they want the aircraft to be proven, so it has to be unnumbered. So that package 
ends up being a little bit more expensive but the capabilities are far greater. You're gonna be able to fly in windier conditions. You're gonna be able to take people along with you, as I mentioned. You're gonna be able to fly in controlled airspace if you get the proper training for that. You're gonna be able to fly off of, in some cases, rougher terrain because your wheels are gonna roll where, you know, if you got potholes or things out there that you wouldn't wanna step in, uh, pirate parachute may be a little better suited for that. So. The, the, the powered parachute definitely has its fit, and it, it has its fit mostly with people who want to take other folks along. The other benefits you're going to get, you're going to get more range. There is no five-gallon limit on fuel for a powered parachute. There is a limit to how heavy the machine can be, but there's 15-gallon tanks commonly made for powered parachutes, and with the four-stroke engines, that that aircraft's gonna go a lot longer than you're gonna want to go between uh, bathroom breaks, okay? So, uh, and you know, and you're gonna be able to fly in, in windier conditions just because it's heavier and it's a little bit more stable. You're also, with a powered parachute, you're able to fly, ironically, in calmer conditions. It takes a little bit of effort to tug a powered paraglider wing into the air. Uh, it's it's a lot easier when you're on foot. It's a little bit more challenging when you have a cart. Uh, a powered parachute, on the other hand, we're just kind of powering that thing into the air. We're just pushing it. It's you, you put enough power to it, you, you're just going to yank it up in the air. So the bottom line, if you are wanting to fly recreationally and you're wanting to take somebody with you, a powered parachute is really the way to go. Um, there, there's exemptions and there's squeaky ways to get around certain things, but ultimately those are for training. Those aren't for uh, just recreating the way most of us want to go out there and fly. Um, and if you want to learn this, if you want to become a powered parachute pilot, you know, scroll down uh, below this video there and there will be some contact information for me. What I do normally is I do instruct, I do train people to fly these things and that's, you know, that's really what I'm all about. Uh, the other thing I'm about is I'm creating this content. I also would appreciate it if you go down and, you know, uh, give me some comments tell me what it is you would like to hear about uh, I'm, I'm suspecting I'm gonna have a couple different audiences I'm gonna have the audience of people who are already fly powered parachutes are so gonna have you guys are gonna want to know certain things and there's certain things that I may be able to help you with or uh, find somebody that knows the answer to it uh, but if you're just getting started in the sport uh, you probably have a whole different set of questions and I would love to, to help explore the answers uh, right here on this channel. Uh, meanwhile, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to be with me today. I look forward to putting more content here together for you. And meanwhile, uh, blue skies and hope to talk to you again soon. Bye now.